Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the comic book industry. I do not expect this video to get a lot of views because everybody is pretty much checked out mm -hmm. from the mainstream comic book industry. But uh, Jim Hanley's universe is closing its Manhattan store. Okay. Now, this is a big deal because it's a big, it's a big shop. And um, Mark Miller, who is a, a very uh, well-respected, well, well-respected by readers, uh, comic book writer and uh, this is a guy who's got a lot of netflix deals and he's probably one of the most successful comic book writers of the last 20 years right -uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well he puts up a eulogy and he's like hey can we talk about this because this is this is not a good sign for the direct market mm -mm. for the big two and this is something he's been talking a lot about lately and of course of course, his quote unquote peers, and I'm using air quotes because they're not really his peers. Most of them don't even probably do much of all, anything at all no. except scream and pretend like they're important. Scream on Twitter. Uh, his peers have dogpiled him on, on the platform trying to say like, comics are fine, comics are fine. This is like, would you make up your mind? Because some days comics are fine, some days comics aren't fine. We've got stories about creators not getting paid, creators losing their homes, uh, publishers going out of business. But hey, comics are fine because Scholastic's selling well, the book fairs. Yeah, but that's fine. They, they wouldn't even count those before. A lot of times no. they would be like, that's something completely different. Those are for kids. We don't count those. They and count them they now. Count, well, they count manga sales now. And then they count the people they hate on crowdfunders. They count their numbers when they want to pretend that their numbers are fine. Yeah, so I think, I think it's all collapsing. And this feels to me... You know, with uh, Jim Hanley closing down this feels now he does have other shops and he's gonna be online, but this is a big this is a big deal, you know. Um, well, read what it said. It feels to me like this is the coda for the direct market. So um, we're gonna talk about okay. this. We're gonna talk about this. This is good. This, this might wind up going long because there are a lot of issues here. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo! You are not gonna get a woohoo. From most of the comic book industry at this point, it's uh, things are not good. But so Mark Miller put this up. Uh, what was it last night? Jim Hanley's store in New York is closing. Unthinkable news, and surely to God, a wake-up call to the big two. Marvel, DC, and all the U.S. indie companies added together are now only nine percent of the American domestic market. Right, because as, as we said, they're counting in. You know. Scholastic, and they're counting in, you know, crowdfunders. Yeah. And independents, and they're counting in manga sales. How does this happen when the characters are more famous than ever? Uh, the, the long and short of it is, is that just because the characters are popular in movies and cartoon shows and on T-shirts doesn't mean people are buying the comic mm -hmm. books. You know, so this is Jim Hanley's uh, Jim Hanley Universe comic books two days ago. This Wednesday will be the last day of our Manhattan location. Uh, first off from Sunday to Wednesday, all back issues and pre 2023 -20, publication day trade. Oh, they're on sale. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Finally, we want to thank everyone for their continued patronage. We wish all of you the best. Remember, keep reading those comics. Don't stop being true believers. Again, they're shifting, I believe, to online sales and they do have another, I think they have another store in Staten Island, right? Uh, Miller says, cut to the usual suspects saying everything is fine. Yes. But look at the shelf space in Barnes and Noble. Talk to your retailer about the cuts he's making. A strong Marvel and DC urgently required again for the health of the overall American industry. This is an iceberg tip. How dare he? How dare he? So, so yeah, th this is what we keep hearing too. Oh, it's okay here. But it's funny because the same people that are like, it's okay here are also writing articles about issues where it's proving that it's not okay. And my next question is this, who are you going to listen to? People whose whole blogs, like The Beat, are reliant on comics doing well to a place they were sold to somebody else and then they had that they got rid of it because it you know sold it back to them because it wasn't worth anything. And their, yeah. whole, their, whole, their whole blog needs comics to do well and, they're, and they aren't doing well. Or people who don't really have like us who like, you know, we talk about comics, but we do our own indie stuff. We don't really have a dog in the mainstream fight. No, and that's the thing. That would be my, I mean, my uh, recommendation to anybody who wants to get into comics now, regardless of what you think about certain people making comics on YouTube or whatever. I would stay the hell, and we're going to talk about the bigger picture here. I would stay the hell away from the mainstream comic book industry just for your own sanity. Yeah, I say mental health. Because the people that are in basically running the mainstream comic book industry, I'm not talking necessarily the publishers or whatever. I'm talking the people working in the industry, your, your quote unquote peers. I mean the Whisper Network people? The Whisper Network people, okay? They're not your friends. They're going to pretend to be your friends. 
but they're not your friends. These people are, I've seen more backbiting, backstabbing, catty ass behavior dragged out in public on Twitter. I mean, <laughs> some of the women are the worst. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I mean, that's how I found, you know, like when I was talking comics before and because I wouldn't follow the feminist narrative about how women are being kept out. And I'm like, well, not really because they're not scholastic and there's been female editors and stuff like that. They, they would boot me out of articles and stuff because I wouldn't toe the line. And then we saw these, you know, these groups of people doing really shitty things. And a lot of the times they're women. Yeah. Um, Sorry, but. Yeah, and so some of those women I'm hearing are uh, facing uh, homelessness now because they're not getting work. But you know, tell oh, me the one that tried to, to the one that tried to go one after of me them that, that went time, after you on Facebook. And then Facebook, I, they yeah. backed down. I was like, yes. oh hell no, and they back actually backed down. Right. So this is this is kind of crazy because um, I did see, and I'm not sure if it's in this or not, but uh, Heidi McDonald was basically chalking it up just to the rents in New York and Manhattan. Now, I do, I no, do that's think that's partly true. I'm I think sure. it's partly true. But why can't you make your rent? Oh, because you can't sell enough shit to make your rent. That's what he's saying. He's saying the market is changing is no excuse. Jeff Johns can move a million units of his Joker story. So the market is, yeah, that would be uh, yeah. three Jokers. This is, this is right there. Go ahead. The market is there if the stories are good. Yes. People just want better mainstream comics. This is the fiscal backbone of comic stores and it's breaking that story. That's true. Oh that my sounds God. like no, comic it's common game. sense. So there's a reason I, I was speculating on this last night. I'm like, you know, how come guys like Todd McFarlane, the, the guys that are in like another uh, tier completely of comics, right? They're not even like you barely could consider him a comic book creator anymore because he's got into like multimedia stuff mm -hmm. and he's doing toys and all that. Why does he not weigh in on all the garbage going on in the comic book industry right now? He's basically above it, and I think he doesn't want to be bothered, and I think it's not worth his time. Mm -hmm. Why would you, if you're if you're a multimillionaire, and you can just do your thing and make your money, and your family's not being harassed or whatever, and you just put your toys oh, out? You don't know the family's being harassed or not. Well, I mean, they're probably if if you're out of if you're not hyperactive on Twitter, you're you're basically out of mind. But here's the thing: it's like these people are just like so fixated on they think they should get theirs, even they a lot of them haven't earned theirs. They aren't good enough for theirs. But they see people who are good enough and are doing it, and then they just get like hyper fixated on those people. Like if they weren't doing theirs and they people weren't giving them money, they'd be giving it to me. No, they wouldn't, cause you suck. And yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe you should spend your time instead of spending hours, you know, on Twitter, you know, her, you know looking at these people and harassing people and getting angry by people, you should spend your time getting better yourself so that maybe you could be where they are. But no, your answer is they don't deserve it. So I'm going to take them down. That doesn't mean you can say you did. That doesn't mean you're going to get anything. Not at all. Yeah. You're better served using your time and energy to make yourself better. That's I, I don't understand. There's just so much like, just sadness. There's, I mean, this is like, look, we, we basically walked away from any, any desire or chance, hope, whatever. There's no money. There's no money. It was like 2014, 2015. We kind of looked at each other and I said, you know, there's no point in doing this because Wait, well, we were only doing it. Cause that's what you wanted to do. Like when I met you, you wanted to be a comic artist and like, yeah, I, when there was I money in it, that. when there was I, money I in fully it, fully supported that many, many times. Like a lot of, I mean, I got, from my here understanding, a lot of women don't. Well, I, rightfully I, I so. Support you you did and i love you for that but i'm saying rightfully so you can't in today's in today's economic reality the the the, the western comic book and again we are not talking manga we are not talking scholastic we're not talking independents who are doing really well yeah we're not talking crap whatever we're talking people working for marvel and dc or, or, or working for like idw and those all these who are left that you know survived the culling that survived the culling the the the, the purity tests it is, it is no way to raise a family. It's no way to... <laughs> Those people know some raising families. They're living in an apartment with 10 other people. Well, that's the thing. You can't. You can't raise... Like when I did mainstream comics, I always did it on the side with a day job because the money was not good enough. And right, it wasn't consistent true. enough. Even if you were making whatever a decent page rate was, like most of these publishers, you had to chase them to get paid. That is Months. also true. Months. We know this for a fact. And I'm sorry, but but your uh, landlord, your mortgage company, they're not going to wait four months to get paid. But that's true. Every time we did comics, except for like when you got laid off from the one company, it was because you worked a full-time job on top of it. And I was doing full-time mom and other stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. But I just think it's, it's just crazy. They're like, you know, 
Oh, here we go. Manhattan rents. That's not the only reason. Heidi, that's not the only, you're. <sighs> enjoy your narrative. Well, Heidi, you enjoy your narratives every day. So, you know, I just, I don't understand how somebody who used to, to really be on top of who was an actual journalist, who was an actual journalist at one point is like, yeah, the, are the rents factoring into it? Yeah. But I agree. I agree. I agree with Mark Miller that like, if you're making bank and you're making money in comics, you should be able to pay those rents. The thing is you're not paying the rents because you can't afford to sell stuff to pay the rents. Right. And And if you have to live, okay, so what's your answer? To afford it because the rents, you're supposed to go to some place where you're gonna have like cheap rent, but like have no market. Yeah, Uh, let's move to like- you're not gonna be able to sell anything because no one wants the shit. I'm sorry, Heidi. They don't. Narrative. You would be an expert on that, wouldn't you, Heidi? Ooh. I don't care, (laughs) truth's the truth. So, I, this yeah, so most of the comic shops, even here in in Pittsburgh, uh, most of the comic shops that are doing well are doing well because of other things. The new comics aren't really selling that much. It's tabletop games, a lot of back issues, a lot of back issues. Back issue sales are doing really well. I and think then graphic you, novels too are doing better than like you know floppies and stuff like that. Too. Yeah, so you've got um, collections like, and stuff. The last time we took a family trip to the one comic shop, we bought almost exclusively manga. Like we bought That's a whole true. bunch, whole bunch of manga. We came or, back with a, or other things we didn't buy, but we were interested in were like the dark crystal, you know, graphic action novels figures and, and, and stuff. Well, I meant like and, the books, like oh the, the book, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. the Archaea. Um, but yeah, so you know, it's. I mean, I kind of looked, I kind of glanced at the wall of floppies, but like I don't, I don't, I haven't, I can't remember the last time, unless it's somebody I know. The last time I bought a floppy comic, I just I'm, don't buy them. I'm sorry. Heidi McDonald, co-author of Secret Teachings of a Comic Book Master. Yes. So isn't it in her best interest to say it's a lie? You, she wants you to buy her book to learn how to be a comic book master, but people that are comic book masters, according to her, are failing terribly. Well, this is the thing. So, okay, you know, okay, so put, I'm put, sorry. I'm just going to call it spade a spade here. So put her... Uh, she's a comics ace. She's not a Oh, spade. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I'm the, a spade a spade. You know? So... She's a putting, joker, a joker. So let's put her. No, Joker would sell and make a lot more money. <laughs> That's true. Uh, let's put her cred up against Mark Miller, who's uh, got a Netflix deal, done The Kingsman, he's done Kick Ass, Jupiter's Legacy, which I guess got canceled. But he's look, he's been consistently selling lots of comics but nah, and but deals she, for she is decades. A, the, the, she is a comic book master. Okay. Um, and look, I do, I do believe, I do believe the rents have factored into it. But again, back to Mark Miller's point that if the comic sales were there, it would be fine. Now, a lot of people are switching to online. A lot of people are switching to the back issue. But we basically have a very a dwindling audience. The current, the current crop of comic book readers, American Western comic book readers, are like middle aged dudes. You know, they wanted younger people. They wanted more diverse people. And maybe in Portland, you get that. Maybe in Brooklyn, you get that. But for the most part, it's 30, 40, 50 year old dudes, mm-hmm. you know, and there are fewer of them. I mean, there are a lot of women, but that, 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 what, what makes you think that women don't want good comics either? There are a lot of women who probably buy this stuff too. No, a lot of them are buying manga though. Just yeah, but I, I mean, my cho- preference is manga. Yeah, I mean, but anyway, I'm just saying. You know, so there, there are a lot of factors here, but look, the, the end of the day, if the product is good and there's buzz around the comic book industry, you know, there's there's no reason why these more stores. And it's not just you know Jim Hanley's. It's it's, it's so many other stores. Um, like I actually told people, I said when Meltdown Comics in L.A. closed, everybody's like, oh, it's gonna be fine. They're just closing down because of the rent. Now I don't think there's anything left of it. Oh, wait, but it's all, all the excuses are rent, rent, It's rent, always a rent. rent. And this is L.A. This is L.A. pre-pandemic L.A. Meltdown Comics was where all the celebrity nerds used to go to hang out and buy. These people had massive amounts of disposable income. You're talking the Will Wheatons, the Kevin Smiths, the whatever. This is where they used to go. And that that couldn't stay in business, you know? It, so, I mean, this has been a long time coming. It's just like, it's not, and none of this should be a surprise. Like, everybody saw, I mean, we're talking... We're talking Austin Powers, right? Where, where like, get out of the way of the steamroller, mm-hmm. you know? And the guy just stands there. It's like, you've had, like, the better part of a decade to see this coming and to oh, course no, but, correct. But, but then, but every time I raises the flag, the Heidi McDonald's of the world, that's narrative. Everything is fine here. Buy my book. Yeah. So this is a guy who's an employee. He said, I'm gutted. Some lovely people work there. Uh, thank you, Mark. Your kind words make this a little easier. I'm sure if he was wrong, uh, they would be calling him out. 
You're like, oh, no, we're closing because of this. And, you know, don't worry. Don't worry. This is fine, guys. It's all fine here. Heidi says it's fine. Heidi says it's fine. You know, it's so it's all good. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, So every business is closing down. So, yeah. So talking about this, too, like, God, there's just so much. We we don't talk about the comic book industry because honestly, it's it's depressing, it's sad, and it's just there's so much like legit mental illness going on. Like I just saw a tweet the other day that some guys like tracking down um, Ripa Eric July tracking down his office and like you know yeah that was nuts taping dollar bills to his windows or some shit. Wait, what? Because he didn't read his super chat or something, so he like tracked his. Off. I'm like, what are well, you doing? Some people don't read super chats because they, they one they're they're vile or whatever. You don't want. Yeah, to read that. you don't have an obligation. Or two, to. two, you know, you might have missed it by accident if you have too many. Or I, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Like, I, I don't watch it, so I can't. Speak yeah, I have no idea. I'm just like when you see stuff like that, you see that in the timeline. I saw um, uh, somebody who used to work at uh, DC Comics. And it's a woman who worked in comics, and oh, that I, never happens. I know, right? Unless you're Heidi. Unless you're Heidi. Well, I guess I guess she was at one point friends with Heidi and that whole crew. And uh, she was talking about how I guess her husband was cheating on her or something. And they oh, knew, you were telling me about this. They knew the whole time and didn't do a damn thing about it. Yeah, now, they, they didn't tell her. And then probably, what, were they all cheating with him? Who the fuck knows? They what, probably, they they get a cookie. That's they probably did? it. They probably didn't say they anything. Get a crumb. They, yeah. She has the cookie. You might get one of her crumbs. You might get one of the crumbs. Uh, and they knew. Wait, if if. if I, if I was a friend of somebody and I knew their husband was cheating on them, I would tell them <laughs> because that's what friends do. So you've got you've got that going. You got the backbiting going on, the backstabbing, and they they make it all public. It's in like Facebook groups are out there. They're people that are pissed off. They're they're again for whatever reason. Uh, like Van Skyver is really just God. They cannot get over this guy. Like yeah, he left. He's doing his YouTube thing. Whatever. You don't have to buy his books. You don't have to like him. Whatever. But they're out there, you know, ranting out. If you have anything to do with Ethan Van Skyver at all, I'm I'm going to denounce you right now. And then you're like, who the hell is this person? This person's like not done anything. No. Um, you've got one of the people that harassed you like five or six years ago now publicly saying that they're going to be out on the streets because they can't pay the rent. I'm like, literally every place is at least around here, every place is hiring and they're paying pretty well because nobody wants to freaking work. It might not be comics, but there's nothing wrong with getting paid 20 bucks an hour to bag groceries either. Well, That's, right. You and, know and you can still do comics. Like, you can still do You both. can still do We've comics. We've done it many times. I never, I mean, very seldom did I work full-time on comics. We had uh, the web comic for a while, and then, we, but we had to do conventions too, mm-hmm. you know, and most of the money actually came from the conventions. And then the, the web comic was kind of a, a loss leader. But like, I don't see how, again, unless you're living with like, you know, 10 people in like a rural area, Given today's page rates, you know, that unless you're like a top tier creator at Marvel or DC, you can make a living doing this. I just don't see how. I mean, literally, you can go work retail and make more money Mm -hmm. than your guy. Because I broke it down when I was working on the Disney comics. I did because I loved it. I loved working on the Disney stuff. I loved working on Uncle Scrooge and all that. Um, But I broke it down by the hour. I'm like, my God, I'm making like less than minimum wage. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and that was then. And that was then. That was like I mean, eight years ago. Which is much higher now. That was like eight years ago. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of self-inflicted bullshit. So I, I kept, you know, wondering like why. The, so Rob Liefeld, every time Rob Liefeld opens his mouth, here comes the media. They dogpile him. Well, Rob Liefeld said this. Of course, he's a rich dude. He could be giving that money to other people. And he doesn't draw feet very good. So you get that shit on one. <laughs> okay. You get that shit on one. It's like the guy's like, a weird flex, but okay. Yeah, it's a weird, Yeah. So every time he opens his mouth, he gets dogpiled and he's got his podcast, right? So he gives his hot takes, but he's, again, these guys, every time they interact, especially on his, you know, podcast, he gets paid. He gets paid. Yeah. But I'm just like the reason that these guys, a lot of times I feel like they don't come down from on high. And the fact that Mark Miller is actually like slumming it and giving these people the time of day, the reason they don't come down from on high and they kind of stay in their own little pocket universe is because they don't want to deal with the drama and the poverty and the bullshit like they figured out how to make comics work for them or at least work, you know, make comics adjacent uh, businesses work for them. Mm-hmm. And they know if they come down from on high and deal with these people, 
that they're going to get blasted. They're going to get called out. Well, they're going to get harassed. Out, but if you interact, it just starts again. And the thing is, it's like these these people are just jealous at the end of the day. That's what it is. It's they're jealous absolutely. because I'm getting kicked out of my house because I my, my work sucks and no one wants it. This person is doing well and people are buying their work and I'm mad about it because in my mind, I think if they weren't buying theirs, they'd be buying mine when the reality is they wouldn't buy yours either way. It's, it's disproportionate in comics to the, to the point of being ridiculous. It's not even like an 80-20 rule. It's but it's like always a, been like that where people – there were some people that were the superstars that did really well and a lot of people didn't. That's why it's been forever. Well, OK. So going back to Todd McFarlane, back in the day, he had a beef with uh, Peter David, who's a writer. And I like Peter David's work. But now Peter David is poverty-stricken and he can't pay his health. And it's horrible. I mean it is. He can't pay his – um, his health bills and all the stuff that, that you know, and Todd McFarlane was like a multimillionaire buying a three three million dollar baseball. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, who was actually right? Todd McFarlane was basically like, you do what sells, you know, mm -hmm. and you, you make you make comics that sell, and and uh, you know, the art is a huge part of it. And Peter David's like, no, the script's more important, which it it is. But he just had this really weird obsession with. Todd McFarlane. Now, back then, you could joke about it. We didn't have Twitter or any of this shit. And you know, as far as I know, nobody's like getting doxxed and threatened and you know all this. But they went back and forth for years. And at the end of the day, Todd McFarlane was right. Now, Todd McFarlane does interviews occasionally, but I don't see him like jumping into people's mentions in Twitter drama. No, because he he doesn't need to. He's got his, you know. So I, I think the only advice I, I I would give anybody that wants to do comics at this point is stay the hell away from the comic book community, quote unquote, because well, half of them aren't even actually they're not doing even, comics. They're not even doing, they either, they did comics, they did a couple of things in comics, you know, and the people that are trying to gatekeep the comic book industry are broke ass, you know, they're mm -hmm. like trying to, it's like, why would you take advice? I mean, I always tell people like, don't take financial advice from somebody who's filed for bankruptcy multiple or, times. Don't take financial advice from somebody who's not where you want to be. Right. I always tell you people know, that and they get, they used to get I, so they, pissed people at me. People get so mad. I know this one person we knew, web comics. Oh my it was God. a comics person. She, uh, or, or is it they, them now? I think it's, it's they, them. I whatever. Think now. I don't think it's so they, them. I think it's like easier. Because they like to set themselves up as the comics guru, even though their stuff did jack shit. Okay. It didn't get very many views at all. And it didn't, it, and they would set themselves up as the authority. And a lot of times what they would do is re repeat back what other people told them. They'd be in other groups and repeat back what other people said and act like they were the ones that thought of it. They repeated back my stuff a few times and took credit for it as well because I had talked to them directly. Um, but they would set themselves up as this comic authority. But they got so mad when we said, don't take advice from somebody who's not where you want to be because, you know, well, I'm the, I'm the authority. I, I'm the one. And like, but your stuff doesn't do jack shit. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a meanie. I'm just like, don't act, go around telling everybody else what they should and shouldn't do when you yourself aren't following your own advice. That's I, not even yours. There are people out there like, I'm never going to work with anybody that's even CG adjacent or whatever. Anybody that follows certain YouTubers. Then you look and you're like, who the fuck are you? Well, not just like that. nobody buys your shit. If nobody you, knows you, who you if are. If you do, play the six degrees of Kevin Bacon game, you're going to find somebody who's friends with somebody. So Absolutely. you're going to have no connections to anyone. Good job. So, I mean, the deal, the case with uh, Van Skyver, he was one of the top DC artists for years. People worked with him around him. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you have to like disavow all that shit. It's like, then go eat cat food, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not trying to be a hard ass. I'm not trying to be a dick. Well, Gary uh, from Nerdrotic, he... They loved him too because he had a shop in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. It was a successful shop and he sold his shop. And then that, the owner of that shop who conveniently enough writes for comics beat. Well, that shop's failing or failed too. They had to shut well, again, down. Who's who, what would they, it sounds like there is a definite to say that's a narrative pretending that it's not a real issue and that it's narrative. Who does it benefit? It doesn't benefit us, but it sure as hell benefits them to spread the idea that it's just, it's all fake. and It's not true. Even though it's it's you know it's documented and it's provable. There there is more documentation on the decline of the comic book industry than there was Western. on Western. I comic make sure book. I specify. Yes, Western because manga is fine. Big, you know the big ones are like wait, IEW. Their stock's worth what sixty cents a share now. Do, hot damn, it's doing, fifty-two when it's I checked. It's doing it. great. Yeah, they're doing. You're great. right, Heidi. It's it's it, it, nothing. Nothing's wrong here. Nothing's on fire. It's all great. I just, I don't, I don't. 10 years ago. Let them keep thinking that as they No, that's down. what I'm saying. Just let them, let's let them let, scream. Let it burn down. Peter Samedi is like, how's it happen? You know, the system's been purposefully broken over and over. I remember right. he Heidi got into a fight with, and listen, like, let's 
don't go on Heidi McDonald episode. But no, she got into a fight with uh, one of the guys who writes for Bleeding Cool now is uh, Jew Terror, who said 12 years ago, the stuff that YouTubers have been saying more recently, like he was actually, he was actually the first comic skater, <gasps> but he was saying the stuff and they were just attacking him like crazy. Like you're lying. It, everything's fine. It's okay. Let it, let it well, burn just, down. That, you can just make a statement as a, as a totally, un, you know, uh, not knowing anything about comic skate and say, wow, there's a problem here. These numbers are terrible. Yeah. And then you get dogpiled and unfollowed by your friends yes. in the comic industry. And I know they're this afraid. for a fact. Because it's happened to us. That's why we're here. They're afraid. They're so afraid. It's like, what are you afraid of? What, you know they're what not afraid of. They're not going to, what? They're not going to give you a, a job that you might, that you're going to have ghetto wages wouldn't, not get paid for? Wouldn't it have been better if people had just faced the reality and tried to find a solution that actually worked? You know what I mean? And then maybe some of these shops would not be shutting down now. But they didn't. Instead, they just sat there and kept saying, it's not, it's not true. It's, it's, it's all a lie. La, 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 I don't hear you. You know? And 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 now it's gotten worse. So I don't know what to There's tell you. There's no fixing this. I, I don't know what to tell you. When somebody is so... Like, well, you don't have a solution. My solution is don't go mainstream. That's my solution. My solution? Yeah. And, like, I'm not going to sit here and, like, we, we've dunked on the mainstream industry somewhat, right? We don't talk a lot about the comic book industry right now because I don't really see the point. I mean, we're doing our stuff and we're we doing fine. We stay away from this shit. We stay away from it. We, we know. The reason we stay away from it is we know what it's like. We know what the people are like. You're just, you're just wasting your breath. They're you're just, wasting your breath. They're not listening to you anyway. They're just going to keep plugging their ears and screaming. I used to do podcasts uh, back when we did the webcomic thing and we would talk about like the, the business side we did. of running a website and the business side of doing webcomics and business side and people were just like, they would get so angry. You're ruining my dream. You're ruining, yeah. I'm like, but the ones that would tell them everything they wanted to hear, they'd pay a bunch of money to keep telling them what they wanted to hear, even if it wasn't true. And then they were just taking their money and laughing. And then these people were just like, yes, yes, tell me more. Here's more money. And then when you try to tell them the truth, they didn't want to hear it. I mean, I just don't know what to say anymore. There's nothing you can say. There's if nothing. We gave up trying to help people a long time ago. I, I don't, don't help listen. people. They don't listen. I don't even see the, I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick about it, but like, there's nothing I can tell you that is going to make it any easier. There's nothing I can tell you that's going to fix this. I mean, I don't have any jurisdiction whatsoever of the mainstream industry. None whatsoever. Nah, right. you, and you're, it's, we're single-handedly destroying it all. Yeah, we're, you ask. We're, we're either, we're either uh, a nothing burger or, or people like us are destroying it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um so what Sometimes I would, I'm the same person. What I can tell somebody if you're a a uh, an aspiring creative and you want to make comics is there is good money in comics if you find an audience and you're gonna have to work to find that audience. Stay the hell away from the mainstream comic book industry. Like there there's only pain and sadness and poverty and mental illness. Lots and lots of like I'm not even joking. Like legit mental illness. It's sad. It's scary. Uh, some of the stuff that I've seen on Twitter and just, like I said, that dude, like going to Eric July's office, I'm like, what the hell? Uh -huh. And that's the tip of the iceberg. There've been so many like threats against people and just bizarre, just bizarre shit. And it's like, this is a very unwell industry. If you get in, you, you make your comics, you find your audience, you make your money, you make your deals, you, you get your Netflix deal. You worry about you. You well, worry about you. You take care I of suggest. you first. I say instead of spending all your time on Twitter getting mad about people like, you know, this comic shop or, or Mark Miller or, you know, different people like that, spend your time figuring out how you can get yourself where they are, where you want to be. Figure out how you can improve your craft or whatever aspect of comics you work in or want to work in. How do you get in? That kind of stuff. And spend your time doing that instead of sitting on Twitter all day wasting hours and hours. How many writers are on Twitter all day wasting hours and hours? And it's like, you know, and their, their books are late. You're like, I wonder why. Just be good at what you do. Do your job well and get better at what you do. It just, yeah, there's, there's and nothing. It doesn't make it better for everyone if you just stop yelling about it all the time. That, well, that's just it. And I, uh, yeah. So I, I think it's just, it's over. It's, it's over. You can make money doing comics. Just you're going to have to do your own thing. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing because it, it doesn't matter. None of it matters anymore. It's over. It's been over. So mm -hmm. we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.